the first subject, what we call devotion, this is really the beginning of all religions, devotion. Now, when we talk about religion, uh, in the West and in the dictionary, the English dictionary, Oxford dictionary and even other uh, Webster's dictionary, all these dictionaries define religion as a belief in a God and God is seen to be a supernatural being not a natural being and uh, God is supposed to have created the world and all that but there are other gods also that uh, other kinds of religion like polytheism polytheism means uh, they believe in different kinds of gods the god of love, the god of war, the god of uh, all kinds of gods for various things. And uh, the monotheism is that kind of religion that believes in one god who created the world. And uh, so for these uh, theistic religions, really mainly the monotheistic religions, uh, like Judaism, Christianity and Islam, they are all, uh, they believe that religion is something that has come down from earth, uh, come down from heaven to earth. Mm -hmm. That religion is something that has come down from heaven to earth. And of course, uh, that God who is in heaven uh, has brought down a message to the human beings that God created and the message is uh, a certain uh, number of laws what are called the Ten Commandments and these laws uh, must be obeyed by the human beings and uh, if they don't obey they'll be thrown into hell and if they obey they'll be taken to heaven so that uh, the whole problem problem is uh, obeying the laws that's the main thing there now Buddhism is a different kind of religion because in Buddhism we don't have this uh, creator God and uh, Buddhism is what should be called a humanistic religion. Now that means the Buddhists don't believe that religion came down from heaven that religion is something that has grown up on earth to satisfy a human need <coughs> to solve a human problem and that human problem seems to be the same problem that uh, even the theistic religions are trying to solve because all these theistic religions, they believe that uh, when they die, they can go to heaven where there is eternal life and eternal happiness. Why do they want eternal life? and eternal happiness because in the world that we live in there is no eternal life 
Every person has to die. No one likes to die. But everyone has to die. And also, you don't have eternal happiness in this world that we are in. There are pleasures that come up once in a way and then it goes away. It doesn't stay. And then pains also come. They also remain for, for a while and goes away. Nothing is permanent in the world. And this is why it is not a world of real happiness. It's a world without happiness. So this is why people are in a state of insecurity. Insecurity, that's the problem. And of course, uh, when you are born, there will be someone to look after you. Now, if there is no one to look after you, what will happen? You will die. Even as a child, if no one is looking after you. Now, out of all the animals in the world, the human being is also supposed to be one of the animals. And, but, most other animals, when they are born, after a few hours or maybe very quickly, like fish, they can start swimming and then uh, other animals can start walking. And, uh, but the human being takes a long time to be able to walk and even uh, to run and uh, even to find food. Now if, if the human child is not given food by the parents or whoever is looking out, uh, that person, that child will die. So even from birth, they begin to feel the insecurity of life. And the parents have to provide the security, the comfort. Even uh, when the child is born, what does the human child do? The first thing that the child does, what's that? Breathe. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's correct. Yeah, and uh, not only breathe, that child begins to cry. That means the child is not comfortable. Because coming out of the mother's womb means inside is very hot. When you come out, it's very cold. It's like freezing cold. So, so the child has to cry. And then that means you are entering a, a world where there is uh, unhappiness and suffering. So, but the problem is, when the child is uh, in any difficulty, what does the child do? No. The child will cry. So, but somehow that insecurity is overcome to some extent because the parents are looking after the child. The mother or even the father, if there is anyone to look after the child, the child can run to that person. Now this child 
begins to grow up and ultimately becomes an adult. So when the child has become an adult, when that adult is in difficulty, where can they run? Are they running to the mother or the father? The child begins to realize that the father and mother are as helpless as himself or herself. Where can they now run? So they can only run to an imaginary dream world where there is a God who is looking after the people and some God who is uh, the creator of the world and all those things. So even before people thought about the creator, they had various kinds of gods to, for these people to go and pray to the gods in order to share their supernatural powers. That is how they feel the security. It's only a feeling of security that you get. It's not a real security because those gods are not visible to anyone and uh, they can only believe. So they are only in an imaginary world of belief. Now, this is why most of these theistic religions, belief is the most important thing. And that belief gives a feeling of security. And that is what they call faith. Faith is belief. And they also have the hope. The hope is that God will help them and also even when they die, God will come and take them to heaven. And of course, once they die, they are, once they die, they are uh, free from all the troubles because they have eternal life and uh, eternal happiness. So this is... But in this humanistic religion, they begin to think in a different way in Buddhism. You see, they are aware of the insecurity of life the problems of life is that you have to die as the biggest problem. And the other one is that you are not happy all the time. You are unhappy, you are having problems. And that means the basic thing in this unhappiness is that your desires cannot be satisfied. Because these things called pleasures just come and go. When the pleasure is present, you can be happy. But when the pleasure is absent, you are unhappy. When the pain is present, you are unhappy. But when the pain is absent, you are happy. So this happiness and unhappiness is alternating all the time and uh, always dissatisfied. Always dissatisfied because we are filled with desires of all kinds. So at the beginning it may be that uh, you need some clothes to wear. So you have clothes to wear but then 
That is not enough. Another desire comes up. You have to have the, uh, uh, what they call having a roof to uh, protect you. Huh? That means you must have a house to live in. And then that is also not enough. You need food to eat. Huh? So you have to have food and uh, then you also need medicine when you are sick. So all these problems, how today modern people, how do they solve that problem? Food, clothing, shelter and medicine, four things. And uh, they have to go and do a job. That is the only way they can find money. And money has become the tool to satisfy your desires. Ah, uh, uh, he is the accountant, huh? You know how to make money. Huh? <laughs> Well, uh, the most important thing is that, that we are unhappy in the world and uh, so that is the problem that uh, this humanistic religion called Buddhism is trying to solve. So it is not trying to solve the problem of the Creator. Because problem, uh, creator had a problem. <laughs> you know that? Because he created Adam and Eve and asked them not to eat from that uh, tree. But they ate. So he became very angry. And so became so angry that he punished these people by throwing them out of that uh, garden of Eden huh? yes. and they are going to die forever. Everyone will have to die and not only really die, they will also go to hell and they can suffer in hell and not only suffer in hell, even in this life the women have been given a very bad thing which is that they have to produce children and in giving birth to a child they have to go through a lot of pain and not only that they have to bring up the child and that is also not an easy job and so and the men have to go at least go do jobs and bring money <laughs> So you see, all those things are punishments given by this Lord. So he had a problem. So, uh, so religion is really being practiced not to solve the problem of human beings, but to solve God's problem. <laughs> that is the uh, theistic way of thinking. But here in the humanistic way of thinking, uh, God is, uh, anyway the problem is the problem of the human being and for the, his idea of God is very important because even in the humanistic religion, the idea of God is there. Although it is not the theistic religion, the concept of God is there. Because some people say they don't have the concept of God, but that is not true. Because when the theistic religions, when they talk about God, who is God? What is the nature of this God? He 
he all knowing he knows everything and uh, all powerful and at the same time he is all good so three things all powerful all knowing and all good now today modern philosophers ask the question if he is all powerful and all good and all knowing how did he create the bad world like this and they have no answer the only way they answer it is to give a excuse that god gave the human beings a free will and it is because of that free will the human being is blamed for not using the free will to do the right thing and that is why god is punish the people so that free will uh is the text was given so the important thing is but these philosophers don't accept that idea of free will because even that free will is used by that individuals intelligence or whatever it is and uh, god is responsible for that the free will also how how that person uses the free will just like say uh, you buy a car from a, maybe ford company or something some place like that and then uh, the, there is something wrong with the car the car is not working in the proper way who is to be blamed is it the car that you blame or is it the maker of the car that is to be blamed so that is the point uh, that the philosophers bring up huh? that free will is not an excuse because god gave the free will also and so if it is not be used so like that so somehow because of this we have a question is this god uh the person who is all powerful all knowing and all good if he is the creator of the world if he is the creator of the world he can't be having all the powers and uh, all the wisdom and all the goodness so from this buddhist point of view God is not the creator of the world. God cannot be the creator of the world. God is a human concept. And this human concept is the concept of perfection. Perfect in powers perfect in knowledge wisdom and perfect in goodness so in other words god is a human concept of perfection and uh, why do these human beings think of perfection why do they want perfection because they see that all the 
troubles that human beings have is because they don't have enough wisdom, they don't have enough powers, and because they don't have goodness either. Hmm? Because goodness is also necessary because most human beings are very bad. Hmm? Why? Because they are selfish. It is that selfishness that makes people bad. You see, if I am interested in something, but you are also interested in the same thing, then we will have to fight. There is no other way to solve that problem. So fighting means wars and everything, all the modern wars are because of this. Two countries want something. <coughs> or two people want the same thing. So you see, because of this, the human beings have a wish to have that power, all powerful, to be all wise and also to be good. So that becomes an ideal. An ideal to be realized. So that state of perfection becomes an ideal to be realized. Hmm. And religion is an effort to realize that ideal of perfection. That is, from this humanistic point of view, God is something that the human being wants to be. And it is only by realizing that state of perfection that the human problems can be solved. And so, the entire practice of religion is a gradual process of trying to reach that state of perfection. And in Buddhism, the important belief there is, is to believe that it is possible for the human being to reach that state of perfection, which is called God by the theistic religion. Hmm. And uh, when the human being reaches that state of perfection, after much effort, it is possible for a person to reach that state of perfection. And when that person reaches that state of perfection, he is called God becomes. The word for God in Indian language was Brahma. Brahma was the word for God. And God becomes is Brahma Bhuto is also called the Buddha. Now Buddha means the awakened one, one who is awakened. That is the meaning of Buddha. Not enlightened. Now some people use the word enlightenment. That is not correct. This is awakened because you see, supposing you are sleeping here and uh, the lights are off 
and you are fast asleep. I come here and switch on the light. You are still sleeping. You see? Now I ring a bell. <laughs> Can you wake up? You see? So being enlightened is different from awakening. A Buddha, we are fast asleep. Why? Why is that? Why did I say you are fast asleep? What happens when you are asleep? Dream. Ah, dreaming. So if we are, if we are dreaming, we can't be awake. Why, what, why, what are we dreaming? This is what the Buddha discovered. We are dreaming that we exist in a world. That is our dream. We are dreaming that I exist, or oh, I dream that I exist, and you also dream that you exist. <laughs> you see, this is what is happening. So we have to awaken from this dream. So this is why I put it as becoming a Buddha is awakening from the dream of existence. You know, there is a school of philosophy today called existentialism. Because all the Western philosophers up to now, even the Western psychologists, they are still going on what that philosopher called Descartes. The French guy. He said, I think, therefore I am. Because he, he wanted to question everything. He wanted to question everything. And at the beginning, he gave up even the thought I am. And he was questioning. And ultimately he couldn't believe anything. He gave up all beliefs. But he thought, well, it is true that I can't believe any of these things. But there is one fact. Because I am questioning. I am trying to find out. That means I am thinking. So if I am thinking, I must be here to think. And therefore I exist because I am thinking. So, so, one, so that is how he came to the conclusion, I think, therefore I am. So this is that concept has been carried throughout by all philosophers in the West. This is the problem. And up to existentialism they have come. They have said, existentialists started saying the most basic thing that we have to start with is that I exist. But the problem is they 
saw a problem. Every human being is aware of his own existence. But every human being is also aware of his death. This is the biggest problem they came across. <coughs> How are we going to solve this problem? We have to die. That is the biggest problem. This man called Kierkegaard, who started talking about existentialism, he thought of all kinds of ways he thought he might, he gave up Christianity because he criticized Christianity. Although he was born as a Christian, he criticized. But then he said the only way to solve this problem is to take the leap of faith and let God solve the problem. Because the human mind is not able to solve this problem. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, so, what can we do? And then, of course, there were other philosophers like uh, Sartre. <clears throat> Sartre said, we can't believe in this God because we have already given up God. There was this other man who said, God is dead. <laughs> so, we cannot depend on God to solve this problem. The human being has to solve the problem. Of course, I cannot solve the problem because I am a human being. So, only thing is, someday, maybe in the future, the human being has to somehow find a solution and ultimately Sartre was, he was criticizing Marx at the beginning. Ultimately he became a Marxist before he died. <laughs> that is what happened to Sartre. So somehow they couldn't solve the problem. But you know, there was this Prince Siddhartha. You know that name Siddhartha is a very interesting name. Siddhartha. Siddha Artha means uh, I would translate it in, in English as uh, one who accomplishes the task. Siddha Artha. One who or the most successful person. Huh? He was uh, born as a prince, a royal family, and he had, uh, in India at that time, they didn't have air conditioning. You know, now we have this thing called <laughs> air conditioning. They didn't have TVs and uh, they didn't have all these luxuries like that. But his father was rich and he created luxuries for him. He built three 
mansion, a seven-story mansion, uh, for the three seasons at that time, the, the cold season, the hot season, and the rainy season. Now, they didn't have this uh, spring, summer, uh, autumn and winter, but they, they had only three seasons. For the three seasons, three mansions were built because he had mine. And even at the top floor, they had swimming pools. And uh, uh, even uh, lotus ponds. Uh, and uh, he had uh, beautiful girls coming and dancing. They didn't have the TV, but like the TV, this is the life. So, and they had all the delicious food and everything was there, all, all the comforts. And, uh, and when it was the hot season, they had the people coming and fanning him so that uh, it will not be so hot for him. And also that whole building was built in such a way that the heat doesn't come in. So like that. And he was mainly living in the seventh floor. He, he didn't have the need to come down uh, to the first floor. But one day he wanted to go out into the world and see the world. And the king sent a message to the people in the world. No one should uh, come close to the prince so that uh, who will be, who is old or sick or any dead corpses should not be shown because the astrologers I told the king that uh, he will see these three things, the old person, a uh, sick person and a dead person. And that is what will make him renounce the world and go into the forest. So the king did like that. So he made all the precautions to keep him comfortable and not to see anything bad. So somehow he was taken in a horse carriage or something and uh, as he went, he happened to see an old person, <laughs> and a uh, sick person, and a dead person. And he began to think, who are these people? Then that uh, the charioteer or whoever uh, explained, said these are people like you, Any, anyone after some time begins to grow old and fall sick. And everyone has to die. Oh, is that so? You mean all human beings have to die? Yes. Then he began to think. <laughs> he went home and started thinking. That was the time he started seeing the realities of life. And he thought, Everyone has to die, not only 
human beings, even animals, even plants, even inanimate things like this house will be broken down and will come to an end. Even the sun, the moon, the stars, all that is going to die. Then he saw another person, fourth person, that is a person who had renounced the world and gone to meditate, a yogi. Who is that man? Then the uh, charity explained who that was. Oh, this is, you know, all these human beings, being subject to old age, disease and death. They are going after things that are subject to old age, disease and death. And as a result they suffer. Everything is impermanent in this world. And so, they don't want impermanence, they want permanence. But they go after things, get attached to people or things. And as a result, they suffer because of the impermanence. So what should be done? Here is one man who is giving up all those things. And he is going to purify his mind, free his mind from all these desires and hatreds and worries and anxiety. That is what I should do. That is the right thing to do. I will also give up everything. <laughs> so he went, you see. And that is how he went to become a yogi. He went into the forest. Gave up it. He had a wife. He had, he had produced just one child. And gave up the wife. Gave up the child. Gave up the parents. Gave up everything. And even his clothes he gave up and he started wearing a, a small loincloth or something like that. And he went into the forest to learn meditation. So he met the most advanced meditators at that time. And he learned all that meditation purify the mind and to purify the mind is to uh, tranquilize the mind to purify because all impurities are emotions and these emotions are actually uh, all disturbances of the body and mind Every emotion, whether it comes in the form of love or whether it comes in the form of hate or whether it comes in the form of worries, anxieties, everything is a disturbance of not only the mind, the whole body is disturbed. Now that is very clear. Modern scientists are aware of this properly. When you become Angry, how does that happen? A message goes from the brain to a gland. There is a gland called the adrenal gland. And that secretes a hormone into the blood. And this blood carries it to the heart and the heart pumps it to the whole body. And when this hormone goes to various parts of the body, those parts begin to function in a different way, not the normal way. And that means all the muscles become tense. And when the muscles become tense, you feel uncomfortable. And all the blood rushes to your face. And the muscles in your face also become distorted and uh, now like in the cats you see the 
the eyes, the, that black spot in the eye begins to expand. And also the hair stand on end. So all that kind of thing that happens means that you have become angry. So that uh, 
the lawyers will benefit from that. <laughs> so that is the only way you can solve the problem. So this is what is called sublimation. Doing things in a good way. And that is what we call becoming civilized. That is what is called becoming civilized. So he wrote a book called uh, Civilization and its Discontent. That means to be civilized is to be discontented. That means you are not happy because the thing is you, a young man might uh, get married, you see, because that is the civilized way of doing it. But then, when he walks on the road, he is another girl, you see. <laughs> so, he walks that also. So, how can he can't get married to two people? So, what can they do? <laughs> so, he has to be discontented. That is a problem. To be civilized is to be discontent. That is the discontent in civilization. So you see, it's very uh, interesting. Freud could solve the problem beyond that. His only way was to supplement. But sublimation is not going to solve the problem. So it was the Buddha who ultimately found a solution. He discovered, the Buddha discovered that when we talk about the mind, we have really either two minds or two parts of the mind. One part is the thinking part. Other part is the emotional part, emotion. And uh, the thinking part is what we call our intelligence or the intellect. And the Buddha gave a name for that, that is called Mano. Mano. And then the emotional part, he called Chitta. The word Chitta refers to the emotional part and Mano refers to, now we also have uh, in, in psychology, they have uh, two words. The thinking part is called the cognitive and the emotional part is called the affect. Now Freud used two other words. The thinking part, Freud called the ego and the emotional part he called the id, id id. So, uh, so anyway, now the ordinary people who are not psychologists or Buddhists, they have also two words. One is called the head, the other is called the heart. <laughs> heart refers to the emotion and the head refers to the thinking part. Hmm? So you see, uh, this is very important to understand. Uh, 
of when Freud thought these emotions are coming from inside seeking an outlet and therefore the emotions cannot be removed completely because the emotions to solve this problem we have to remove the emotions. The emotions are creating the problem. And the Buddha saw this when he said uh, they used the word tanha as the cause of suffering. Tanha. The word tanha is today translated as craving. But that is not correct. It's not craving, it is emotion. That is what tanha is, emotion. So chitta is also a word used to refer to the emotion. But the chitta is really anna. It's the same thing. The important thing is that uh, the emotions have to be got rid of. After Freud, a new school of psychology came up. And they said, there is a method of getting rid of the emotion. That is called cognitive psychology. Cognitive psychology, they pointed out that that cognitive process, I told you the two processes, cognitive and the affective. Though the cognitive process simply means We see the world through the senses. If we didn't have the senses, we will not know anything about the world. Because what we see is the sense of eyes, ears, the nose, the tongue, and the body. These are the five senses. <coughs> and it is through the five senses that we become aware of a thing called the world. But with the eyes, we only see. With the ears, we only hear. With the nose, we only smell. With the tongue, we only taste. And with the body, we only touch. But all the information that we get from the eyes, the ears, the nose, the tongue, and the body, is brought to the brain through the optic nerve, auditory nerve, the olfactory nerve and all the different nerves bring. And the brain begins to think. There is a portion of the brain called the cerebral. Now you want to know about the brain, no? Huh? <laughs> so this is and that is where the thinking goes on, especially what is called the cerebral cortex. That is where the thinking goes on. And with this thinking, you give meaning to what you saw, or what you heard, or what you smelled, or what you tasted, or what you touched. And that is what is called cognition. Giving meaning is the cognition. And according to the meaning that is given, the emotions are aroused. So, the real thing is coming from outside in and not inside out. Do you understand that? So that the meaning that you give is responsible for the emotion that is aroused. And this is what the Buddha saw. There in, in a sutra the Buddha says, 